The President Vladimir Putin is center stage as Russia launches an invasion of its neighbor, Ukraine. There have been multiple reports of explosions, bombings, and Russian military vehicles entering Ukraine from various parts of the border with Russia, with a growing number of casualties being counted on both sides. Now, here is a guide to what's going on in Ukraine and why it matters. President Vladimir Putin is center stage as Russia launches an invasion of its neighbor, Ukraine. There have been multiple reports of explosions, bombings and Russian military vehicles entering Ukraine from various parts of the border with Russia, with a growing number of casualties being counted on both sides. In a televised speech earlier today, President Vladimir Putin announced a military operation in Ukraine's eastern Donbass region. This area is home to many Russian-speaking Ukrainians. Putin said Russia was intervening as an act of self-defense and did not want to occupy Ukraine, explaining that he would demilitarize and denazify the country. He urged Ukrainian soldiers in the combat zone to lay down their weapons and go home. Loud bangs could be heard in the capital Kiev as well as Kramatorsk in the Donetsk region of eastern Ukraine. Blasts also were heard in southern ports of Odessa. Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky said Russia had carried out missile strikes on Ukraine's infrastructure and on border guards. However, Russia's defense ministry has denied attacking Ukrainian cities. Ukraine said tanks and troops had poured at points along its eastern and southern, even northern borders. Convoys have also entered the eastern Luhansk and Kharkiv regions and moved into Kherson region from Crimea, a territory that Russia annexed from Ukraine in 2014. Yeah. Essentially, the battle over Ukraine is a battle for influence and power. Ukraine's government, now under President Vladimir Zelensky, has pivoted towards the West in recent years, aspiring to join the EU and NATO and to move away from its post-Soviet orbit of Russia. Ukraine's drift towards the West aggravated Moscow because it does not want to see NATO or the EU expand eastwards to incorporate Ukraine. Close watchers of Putin have long believed that Russia has prepared for more sanctions and that Moscow has a bigger plan in mind when it comes to Ukraine, a hypothesis apparently being proven by the latest events in Ukraine. We're now being joined by Koch, on a Jew public affairs analyst, and also joining us as former DG in the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs, Professor Bola Akin Terinwa. Many thanks for joining us, gentlemen, on the, on the news tonight. Let me start with you, Professor Akin Terua. Now, the federal government has planned evacuation of Nigerians from Ukraine. What do you think of this particular decision? Is it coming at the right time or is it a bit too late? Professor. It is most unfortunate. Uh, and uh, the situation can be understood as well. Nigeria, under the administration of President Muhammad Buhari, is not on record to have any programmatic foreign policy. At best, it only reacts. Consequently, uh, any reactive foreign policy can only be expected to be done too late. Why should, uh, for instance, uh, at this point in time, when other leading countries of the world had already evacuated their citizens. Now it takes the, um, the National Assembly to now decide that at its latest, 
tomorrow, um, they should go and plead with the chairman of the um, ARPs to find solution to evacuate them. What type of uh, firefighting approach are we still doing that for? When already, um, there is already crossfire in the place. So I think it's unnecessarily coming too late. The time the United States asks its own citizens to, to quickly leave, the time the French did, what are we doing? Why is the foreign policy, um, the foreign ministry also sleeping? No, really, it's most unfortunate that the uh, life uh, of the Nigerian, you know, they do not mean anything to the foreign minister. It is most unfortunate. All right, I will still come back to you, Professor Akin Terwa. But let's uh, talk to Dr. Kach on Nonuju. Do you share uh, Professor's, uh, you know, own point of view? And um, just how do you think, um, um, what can be done to ensure that Nigerians are not really caught up in the crossfire of things right now? Dr. Nonuju? Well, thank you very much. I believe it's wrong to expect anything better from President Buhari who has historically shown that he lacks ability to think practically. He has been a reactive president since from the time where he was sworn in. So I honestly don't put any thoughts on expecting him to do better.